Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video what I'm going to be going over is creating some light switches which will turn on and off the lights which we have in our game as well. So this will work for a single light, so one light switch will turn on and off one light and it will also work for multiple lights i.e. a room. So this light switch will turn on this set of lights here. And what we can also do is make sure the lights are either on or off by default when we first create them as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So let me actually go out of full screen because that doesn't look as good. Uh, what we're going to do is let's do this one first. You see it's on by default. If we go up to it, press E, it's going to be turning on and off and that's only affecting this light here. If I were to go over to this one, it is going to turn on and off these three. So you'll see they're off by default. If I press E, it's going to turn them all on and off like so. So this is what we're going over in creating today, something nice and simple, but something which you might want to have in your game. So again, this is what we're going over in creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a blueprint interface so that we can actually interact between the light switch and the lights. So we now have a way to communicate between those blueprints. And this is also a nice and efficient way of doing it. So let's right click, go to blueprints, and we're going to get a blueprint interface and I'm just going to call this light interface. That makes most sense for me. You can name whatever you want, but this is the blueprint interface for our lights. I'm going to open it up straight away. Now this is a read only blueprint. So all we need to do in here is create the start of the function, which for me, I'm going to name toggle lights. And that's all we need to do in here. So we're going to access this via a different blueprint. If you want a more detailed explanation of what blueprint interfaces are, I do have a video linked in the description down below where I explain it in more detail. But we can compile, save, close that, and that's all we need to do with this. We're going to access it later on. Now we want to actually make our light blueprint. So we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this one light BP, opening it up straight away as well. In here, what I'm going to do is basically just add my static mesh for my light, which for me is going to simply be a cube like this. Now you probably have your own static mesh, which will look a lot better, but this is a nice simple one, which I'm doing for this. Obviously, customize it to look how you want. And I'm also going to add in my actual lights. Now I'm going to be using spotlights and I'm going to have three of them just so it takes up this whole kind of cube, which I've got here as my static mesh. Again, I just think that's what's going to look best for me, but obviously do this however you want. And I'm also going to up the intensity to about 30,000 just so it's nice and visible and easy to see in the tutorial as my place is actually quite light already. So again, just customize this to get it to look how you want. So I think that is going to be good for me. Compile and save. I've now got my lights in here with the static mesh and the three lights on here. Again, this is just a customization of how it looks. You can change it a lot. But what you do need to do though, is we do need to create some variables. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here and we can name this one light index. And this is going to be an integer, which is also instance editable. So this means we can now set this light to have a specific index, which we will also set in the light switch so that the two lights and light switches with the same index are compatible and they will communicate with each other. And because it's instance editable, we can change this to be different for each instance of this light. So one light can have an index of one, another can have an index of two and three and so on and so forth. And we're also going to create another variable called is on question mark. This is going to be a boolean, so it's true or false. And again, instance editable, compile and save. So what we'll do first is we're going to set up turning it on and off by default. And that is the main use of this is on variable here. So to do this, we're actually going to go to the construction script. And very simply off here, all we need to do is get is on. So you can hold control and drag in the variable. And this is going to set the visibility of our light. So that's how we're turning them on and off is via the visibility. So if you select all of your lights and just drag them in, you can do them all at the same time like that. Drag out of one of them and set visibility. We can also drag all of these into the same target of the set visibility. Then this will go into the construction script. And what we can simply do is we don't need to have two of these and a branch to see if it's true or false. We can just connect the is on straight into the new visibility there. Because if is on is true, that will set the new visibility to true, which means we can see them. If it's false, that means it's off. So this will set this to false, which means we can't see them. So we don't need to do a branch to see if it's true or false and set it by just ticking it or leaving it false. 
we can actually just input this and it will do it for us automatically because this value will be the same anyway. So we compile, save that, and that's nice and efficient. Now we can have the light either be on or off by default. And what we're going to do is now actually have it so that the blueprint will turn it on and off, i.e. the light switch. So we can actually copy all of this code we just created, obviously other than construction script. So select it, hit control C, go back to the event graph, and I'm going to delete these three nodes here. And I'm going to go to class settings up the top. Under interfaces, I'm going to add, and we're going to add the interface we created earlier, which I named lights interface, like so. Compile and save, and you'll notice on the left, we now, we now have an interfaces tab. If you open that up, we have the toggle lights function which we created. I'm going to right click that, implement function, and now we have the event toggle lights function here. So when this is called from the interface, it's going to fire off this event here, which will make more sense later on when we actually call it. What I'm going to do is control V to paste in the set visibility here. Actually, I will delete the get variable though. So we now just have the set visibility like so. But what we need to do is we also need to actually change this is on variable. So we need to toggle this. So what I'm going to do is get is on. Out of this, I'm going to get a not boolean. And that will then set is on again, like so, which will then go into the set visibility like this. So you should have something which looks like this. Now the reason we're doing this is when we call this function, we're going to set is on to the not of what it currently is. So essentially the opposite. So if is on is true, not of that is false. So we're setting it to false, which will then set the lights visibility to be false as well. If it's false, this will be false. Not means it's true. We're setting it to true, setting the visibility to true so we can see it. So I hope that makes sense. Basically when we call this function, we're inverting or flipping, setting the opposite of what the current value is for is on, and then also setting the lights to be the same value as well. So again, if it's on, it turns off. If it's off, it turns on. Hope that makes sense. So we'll compile, save, and that's really all we need to do within the light BP. We've now got that set up working perfectly. What we need to do now is actually create the light switch BP to actually call that function. So we can close it, and I'm now gonna create my light switch BP. So I'm gonna right click, Go to blueprint class, create an actor, and call this one light switch BP, opening that up straight away as well. Now again, in here in the viewport, what I'm going to do is make a very, very simple um, visual for it. So again, you can use your own static mesh if you wanted, it will make it look a lot nicer. I'm just doing a simple cube shaped like this for the moment, and actually that's what I'm going to do for it. So again, if you have your own static mesh, you can make it look a lot nicer. What you do also need to do though, is add a component and add a box collision just so the player has a place they can be to actually interact with this light switch. Now if you have your own interaction blueprint interface set up which would be a lot more efficient obviously use that and then set this up for how you would normally use that and again if you want to do that as it is a lot more efficient then I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as well. But if you want to just do it how I'm doing in this video there's no problem with that either. So we'll compile and save so now we have a way in which we can actually overlap and interact with this light switch. So what we need to do is create a variable in here, naming this one light index, the same how we did it before, making this an integer and instance editable, compile and save. So again, you'll notice earlier I said we have to make sure the light indexes are the same so they're compatible and can communicate with each other. This is how we do it. We create the index in here as well. So now we're gonna go over to the event graph of this blueprint, delete event tick and event act begin overlap but use event begin play. What we're gonna do is get all actors of class with the act class being our light BP, which we just created. Out actors is going to go into a for each loop going into there like so. And then what we're gonna do here is the array element. We're gonna right click, promote to variable, naming this one lights array or lights array. And then I'm actually gonna delete that and select the variable again, changing it to an array, so the three by three grid there. Then we're gonna drag this in and get, out of this, we're going to add, so just the top add there, connecting that into the loop body and connecting the array element from the for each loop into the add there, like so. So what this is gonna do now is when we begin the game, it's gonna get all of the lights we have inside of our game and then add them into our own array of the lights, as you can see here. Now the reason we're creating our own array instead of just doing get all actors of class every time is this is a lot more efficient. 
We don't want to be constantly getting all of the actors every time we want to turn on or off the lights. We just want to do it once at the beginning of the game and then just access that array whenever we need it. So we'll compile and save that. So that is a nice and efficient way of doing that. Now we just need to actually interact with the light switch to turn on and off the lights. So that's also nice and simple. What we're going to do is right click our box collision, add event and add on component begin overlap, right click it again, add event, add on component end overlap. Now what you can do is out of other actor you can cast your player character and what that will do is that it will mean that this will only work if your player character is the one that overlaps it. I'm not going to bother doing that but you might want to do that if you have AIs in the game for example. If the AI can overlap this you don't want to be able to interact with it when they're there. But other than that what we're going to do is drag out of begin overlap and enable input then drag out of end overlap and disable the input. So disable input there. So it's only going to be looking for the input key for our interaction when we can interact with it, so when we're close enough to it. We also want to drag out of the player controller and get player controller for both enable and disable, like so. And I'm also just going to move these down slightly, like this. And above the beginner of that, what I'm going to do is right click and get my interaction key, which if you've got an action mapping, put that in there, but I don't, so I'm just going to do an E keyboard event like this. And what all of this wants to go into is a gate. So if we hold down G, left click, we can get a gate like so. Enter will be the pressed of the E. Open will be enable input. Close will be disable input. So again, I do have a video where I'm explaining the gate in more detail if you want that. But essentially what this means is the gate will open when we are close enough to it and close when we're too far away from it, it being the light switch. And once it's open, we can enter it by pressing E. But if it's closed and we try to enter it, we won't be able to exit because the gate is closed. So it's essentially like a gate in real life. You can't enter it unless it's open. So out of the exit, this is where we're going to be toggling our lights. So now what we need to do is be able to actually interact with the correct lights. That's nice and simple. We're going to get our lights rate, which we created earlier. Out of this, we're going to go into a for each loop, connecting that into the exit like so. And we want to now be checking the light index. So out of array element, we're going to get light index that we created earlier. This will go into an equal equal integer. And we're going to be checking it against the light index of the light switch blueprint, so the one we have here. So get the light index from the light loop and get the light index from the light switch. This will return a boolean, which we need to put into a branch. So hold down B, left click to get the branch with that being the condition and connect it into the loop body. So it's going to check to see if the light indexes match. If they do, so true, we want to toggle the lights. If they don't, so false, we don't want to do anything. So out of the array element again, we're going to just get toggle lights and we have class lights interface toggle lights message. That's the one which we want. So if you don't have that, just do whatever you actually named your function in the interface. So toggle lights message there, connect that into true. And we're going to compile and save that. This should now be the code working perfectly for us. So what we've done is we've again managed to just set this up so it's going to perfectly interact and communicate with the lights that are the same as this light switch. So if this light switch is 2, it will only toggle the lights of 2. So I hope that makes sense. If I were to close this, I'll show you how to now set this up in your level as well. So we're going to drag in our lights. So I'm going to get light PP here, rotate this around a bit and just move this up just so it looks like an actual light. And I'm going to leave these ones off by default. So you'll notice they are actually off already. And that's because the default value of our Boolean is false. So what I might do is change it to true. So if I just select it, hit true, compile, close it, you'll notice these are now on. But I do want them to be off. I just want it to be on by default. Uh, but this specific one I want off. So I'm going to untick is on there. I'm going to put the light index at 1. So this is the one light. Now I'm going to hold left alt and drag out to duplicate it and do that again. So I now have three lights here, all of them being off with a light index of one. So these will all be activated by the same light switch BP. And I'm going to add in a light switch now. So I'm just going to simply put that onto this wall here, rotate it around so it's facing the correct way. And that's my light switch. Light index, I'm going to set as one because I want this light switch to interact with these lights. So you notice the light index is one on all of these, so they now match. 
and I'm also going to add one over here just to show that it works with just one as well and for multiple in your level. So let me get another light in here, actually I'll just duplicate this so it's the same level, but I want to now set the light index to 2 and I'm going to tick is on, so it's on by default just to again show you it working differently. Then I'm going to get the light switch here and rotate it around and the light index for this one will be 2 because the light index for this is 2 so these will now interact with each other. So that's how you'd link them all together and I hope that makes sense as well. So let's hit play and test it out. This one's on, if I go over here, press E, it turns off, turns on and it's only interacting with this one. And if I go over to this light switch, it should be turning on and off these ones, as you see they're off by default. And E turns them all on and off perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video, it's really done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we now have a light switch which will interact with lights which we have set up in our level and it'll work for just a single one or a row as you've seen there which again would be good for a room full of lights and you can have the lights be on or off by default and it won't mess up with the code at all. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.